want to thank you guys for coming out. We did this uh, rally about five years ago, if you remember. Um, then it was the, um, uh, our government, Mr. Obama, was uh, trying to take, you know, some of our rights away. And if you've been watching the news lately, we're standing in exactly the same spot. Only I consider this um, even more of a threat today than it was even back then. I don't know if you guys are like really watching everything that's going on even today. They're having protests today against gun rights. Um, they, you know, they got some students involved, and I guess whenever you get kids involved in, in the tragedies that we've had lately, it seems to hit a little bit more home with people. There's more of an emotion for it. And people are, are reacting to what's going on, and the first thing that they want to do is, you know, take away the gun rights. So um, that's why we're doing this. One of the reasons is that uh, we, uh, we want everybody to know that we care. We care about what happens with our kids. We care about the tragedies that happen, the mass shootings that are going on. We care about that. I mean, we hurt just every bit as much as the people on the other side of the fence from us, except for we're going, there's another way. There's a different way to go about doing, keeping our kids safe than taking away our rights. Do you guys agree with that? Listen to this, I don't want to make this a religious thing. Um, but there is evil in the world today. There's evil in the hearts of men. And before we even get going really with us, I want to invite Pastor John Winwright up, and he's going to do the invocation for us. Good morning. Pastor John Winwright from Revelation Chapel, and it's an honor to be here. I'm humbled by this. Let's all bow our heads and pray. Father God, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Father God, we thank you for our founding fathers who established everything in this nation upon the Constitution, Father God. We thank you for the Second Amendment that we can stand up for, and it's our right to stand up for, Father God, that you gave to us. And we just are coming against all the evil in this world, the evil decay, the moral decay that's just surrounding us. And Father God, we know that guns don't kill people, people kill people, and you know that too. And we are going to start being a vocal personality throughout this nation for your behalf, for God's people. I just ask your blessings upon this meeting this morning this rally this morning, and I just ask that it goes not only in this community, but throughout the state and throughout the nation, letting people know that there is a conservative side that is stood behind by your power and your authority, and we're grasping that this morning and taking it, and we're going to run with it. And we thank you for it. Just bless everybody that's here this morning, and help us all. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Listen, I've seen a lot of invocations, and that had to be one of the best ones I've ever heard. Thank you very much. Um, we also want to start with um, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, and my son is here somewhere right there. Are you listening? <laughs> All right, so if you could face the flag just like we did in school, maybe this is one of the things, again, that we are missing in our society. How many of you guys did the Pledge of Allegiance in school, right? How many of you young people missed out on that in school? Raise your hand if you missed out on that. Today, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that, you know, even, even in the Pledge of Allegiance, they're taking that, you know, the God out of that, right? And so uh, today, I want you to do it just like we did when we were kids. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all sean sanders you want to come up if i can get the gentlemen to remove their hats please oh say can you see by the dawn's early light was so proudly we hail as the twilight's last gleaming whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch we're so gallantly streaming 
And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangle banner yet He's the bravest one I know that nobody else wanted to get up and lead this thing. <laughs> um, we wanted to have uh, Denny Zent be here, and he wanted to be here. And um, there was a, uh, a, a death with uh, his best friend's spouse. And um, we, I mean, we just talked to him just the other day, and, and he felt bad that he wasn't able to be here. But he did bring a letter. and. My son was going to read it for us. So this is the letter from Representative Denny Zend. <clears throat> My fellow Second Amendment supporters, unfortunately, I cannot be with you today because I need to be with a lifelong friend in his time of need with the passing of his spouse. Our Second Amendment rights are embedded in our Constitution, and anyone who takes the time to read the supporting documents written by the Founding Fathers will realize that they are referring to us. Those gathered here today, and our fellow countrymen, when they stated, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Most of the legislation affecting our Second Amendment rights is decided in the U.S. Congress by the Supreme Court. The Indiana legislator has passed several bills recently to expand your rights and allow concealed carry in more and more venues. Now we are trying to address the permitting process. Current proposals under consideration will allow obtaining a lifetime concealed carry permit at no cost. If it is constitutionally protected right, there is no reason we should have to pay for it. Some believe you shouldn't need a permit at all, but we are making progress and the permitting process will allow more states to accept it. For example, we have the freedom of speech, but typically we require a permit to have a gathering or demonstration like we are having now. Several states, about 10, don't require any permits, and the initial statistics show no increase in gun violence. National data shows that permit to carry holders are extremely unlikely to be involved in gun violence at a rate of only 0.02%. That is five times less than law enforcement officers being involved in gun violence outside of their official duties, and unbelievably better than the public at large. Gun violence has declined over 50% in the last 30 years, and responsible ownership should not be penalized for the action of a few. We are only beginning to realize the depth of our mental health issues in our country, and we should focus our efforts on treatment for those in need, and not punish common sense gun owners who believe in their Second Amendment rights. I have the honor to serve my country in both the U.S. Army in the years 1965 through 75, and the U.S. Air Force in 1976 to 1996. Thirteen of those years were on active duty where weapon training and proficiency were required. I swore an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, and I don't require anyone who, anyone relieving me of that responsibility. And I will continue to defend the Constitution and your rights as a member of the Indiana General Assembly. It is an honor and privilege to be your representative in Indianapolis and I'll strive to do my best to represent you and your families. Thank you for your involvement. We talked to uh, Denny um, on, I believe it was Wednesday, and uh, actually got to sit down and talk to our representative about what he believes, what he doesn't believe, and listen, he is a, a great guy, and he has our best interests at hand down in Indianapolis. So when it comes voting time, I highly recommend uh, you remember that guy when it comes time to vote. Um, I want to be nice, right? I want to be, I want to be, I want to be compassionate and nice and stand up here and and kind of be, you know, political.
politically correct. I'm done with that. Listen, I, I'm I'm mad. I am I am I am so upset. I, you know, when, when I sit at home and I think about everything that's going on in the world today, I'm mad. I don't think I'm the only one. I believe that there's a, a quiet rage happening against the you know fabric of America today. It is not what we grew up knowing. You know, the Trump had a slogan, President Trump had a slogan saying, make, I feel like we're sliding. I feel like we're going in the wrong direction. And I'm mad, it's just not about, it's about a lot of stuff. The fabric of America is hard. You guys feel that? It, you know, it's, it's just, you know, we've been quiet because we are nice people, we comply. We don't want to hurt people's feelings. We grab our lunch buckets every day and we go to work and we do what society expects from us. We do what our parents raised us to do. Be hardworking Americans, good people, respectful people. But I feel like our toes have been stepped on and we've been pushed and pushed and pushed. Good people should not be pushed because sometimes they push back. And I feel like that's where we are. Do you guys feel like we're on the verge of something? Like something big is getting ready to happen and, and you don't want to take it anymore. That's what I feel. I'm mad about Columbine. Right? I'm mad about the shooting down in Florida. I'm mad about that. Just like I know you are. But there's a different way. Just like I said before, there's a different way of going about protecting our kids being safe in society. Being safe in society does not mean you take away our rights to protect our families. We don't have any of a good place here. Dick Dodge. Well, I... Uh, came out this morning to want to thank Josh and Tom for putting this together and thank all of you for coming out here and joining us today in support of our Second Amendment rights. I had the honor and the privilege to serve in the legislature for eight years down in Indianapolis and uh, uh, was a strong supporter of uh, gun rights and uh, have always been and will continue to be. It's a, it's a constitutional right that we have was established some 200 and some years ago and it's something that uh, we feel very strongly about the fact that it is, it is a right that we have living here in this country. There's no doubt that there are many, many problems today in the world that we did not face 20 years ago. Things have changed so rapidly uh, the gun issue has always been there, and it's something that uh, uh, I, I think we'll have to continue to debate. There are no doubt there's, there are people that possess guns that should not have guns, and that is a very complicated issue is when it comes to sorting out who should have these, this right and who should not. But we have so many problems today in, in this world that are contributing to the situation that has caused people to do these crazy things that they do. They're just, they're, they're crazy. It's uh, like, I don't know how you could understand how the thinking of some of the people that do the things that they do. But uh, uh, we have a lot of laws on the books right now regarding the possession of weapons and, and guns, and I think we have enough laws to, that if they were enforced and, and you know, we just uh, uh, seem to be lacking in some way of having people, uh, getting people to understand the fact that there are moral issues that need to be addressed that I think are contributing to the problem we have. I thank you all for coming out this morning, and I just 
uh, appreciate the fact that there are many of you out here who are still still there supporting the Second Amendment and uh, I just say that we continue to, continue to do so. Thank you. Uh, it may look like, you know, we kind of just set this thing up on, on a whim, but we've been working at this for about, you know, I don't know, three weeks or a month or so, uh, trying to get, you know, uh, the permission. I don't want to say permission because we didn't really ask for permission to do this. We, we, uh, we told them that we were going to do it. We had to fill out a safety waiver kind of a thing. Uh, they let everybody know about it, all the uh, police department, everybody know that we were going to be up here, but... Um, it, it took a little bit. Um, one of the, some of the signs you'll see uh, that we passed out, also this banner up there, my good friend uh, Josh Kugler owns a business and that's exactly what he does. And he, he's put a lot of time, effort, and his own money into this thing. And I appreciate it. He's gonna come up here and, and speak a little bit. Guys, I know it's cold out here, so I really appreciate you guys all showing up. I'm not going to take up a whole lot of your time. I just want to give you guys some basic information that a lot of people that support the Constitution and the Second Amendment don't even really realize. And more importantly, I want to give you guys a little bit of information that the majority of the people who would like to take those rights away or restrict those rights don't understand. So what I want to talk to you about is the original intent of the Second Amendment. It was never about deer hunting. It was never about deer hunting. It was not about personal protection. And anybody that wants to argue that point with you needs to read two very important documents that stand very strong right alongside the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. If you have not ever taken the time to read the Federalist Papers, or the Articles of the Confederation. They are extremely important documents to the history of this great country. Anybody that tells you that trying to speculate about the intent of the Second Amendment is a fallacy has never read those two documents. It's very clearly laid out in those documents. The Founding Fathers just came out of a giant war against an extremely oppressive uh, government and if they had been disarmed like the king wanted to do, they knew that they could have never won their freedom and we wouldn't be here right now. We would be, we'd have the Union Jack flag up there right now if those people had been disarmed. They knew that it was extremely important that the people have the right to defend themselves against an oppressive and tyrannical government. You can't do that with a single shot 12 gauge when the government has an M16. Why do I need an AR-15? Does anybody know why I need an AR-15? A lot of people are gonna tell you, well, I don't really, I just want one. No, I need one. The reason I need one is because I can't afford an M-16. And the next best thing is an AR-15. Why do I need that gun? Because the exact same reason that six million Jews needed them. It's the exact same reason that the American Indians should have never given up their firearms. Okay, the reason that we need to be armed is not so that we can fight the government, it's so that the government knows that they don't want to fight us. In World War II, the Japanese never attacked the mainland United States. Are you guys aware of why they did not do that? Because they knew, and it was stated by their leadership, if we ever step foot on American soil, we know that there will be a gun behind every blade of grass. It's not just to defend ourselves against an intruder in our house. The Second Amendment is not there just so that I can walk down the streets of Chicago and not have to worry about being stabbed in the corner of the alley. The Second Amendment is there for us to defend ourselves against any tyrannical government, foreign or domestic. I strongly urge you guys to read those extremely important documents that I mentioned because for you to try and argue about what the point of the Second Amendment is to someone that doesn't read that, it's like 
two blind people trying to have a knife fight. It's just you neither one of you knows what you're talking about. You need to be informed to be able to have those kind of educated discussions with people. And if more people would read that, we would have less people trying to take our way our constitutional rights. As far as I'm concerned, this rally is not about the Second Amendment. It's about the Constitution. I'm a constitutionalist. Do I think that your right to free speech should be restricted? No. Do I think that you should be allowed to burn a flag? Yes. Would I like to throw punch you when you do? 100%. But I'm not gonna. You know why? Because it's your right. Just like it's my right to bear arms. When it says, shall not be infringed upon, it doesn't say, a little infringement's okay. It says, shall not be infringed. That means that I can own an M16, I can own a handgun, I can own a shotgun. I can own anything that I want, and it should not be infringed. What else do we need to talk about? Anything particular? Who, who's coming up next here? Okay, guys, if, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I almost forgot. Uh, Thomas, anybody that's here that's a veteran, if you guys would just take a second before you leave, Thomas, hold up your hand real tall. Thomas has something that he'd like to hand out to you guys. It's a certificate of appreciation. And um, we have this lady, her name is Holly, that does these really nice certificates, you guys. And she does it all, I mean, it's just her own little personal ministry to the veterans of war of this country. And they just want to show you guys some appreciation. So if you just go over and shake hands and say hi, man, that'd be great. He's got a little something he wants to give you. So, okay, I'm going to turn this back over to Tom, you guys. Thanks again for coming out. You got me a little pumped up there for a second. <laughs> um, again, we do we do appreciate you guys coming out. It's cold and um, it shows a lot that you're out here fighting for something. I mean, we could all be home, warm, you know, sitting and watching Oprah or something. But <laughs> Alan, you want to come on up? I'm glad everybody has good memories and don't need no. this land has, has already been brought up. We detest these mass shootings going on. It's a horrible, horrible thing. But to take away our rights for what seems to be protection so that my family cannot be protected later on is senseless and stupid. How, how many people remember 9-11? Yeah. Remember that rage? They went out and said, let's ban the planes. <laughs> Nobody remembers that, do they? 3,000 people were killed. Not one thing said about banning the planes. What did they do? They beefed up airport security. Did they not? <laughs> so... When, when this last shooting happened, everybody said, well, you've got to do something. We've got to do something. So things were said to do something. They said, oh, but we can't do that. The only thing they wanted to do is take away their rights. That's the only issue the other side wanted to do is take away our gun rights, take away our Second Amendment rights. What, how will that help us? There's evil in this world. You, you cannot, you cannot leave off. Yeah, I really like you guys. <laughs> My eyes aren't either. Guns can protect us from evildoers, but if you want to stop evil, there's only one way. Again, when somebody wants to do evil, we can combat a bigger gun to stop that. But we cannot legislate evil. You cannot pass any kind of laws that is going to stop evil. You cannot do it. It's not possible. And the real answer, if we want to stop the evil, most people do not want to acknowledge. A 
Again, we must have some kind of weapons for the evildoers. But if you really want to stop the evil intent of the heart is one way, and it's found in the Bible. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Okay, with all the uh, the school shootings and things that are going on, to hear from a young person, right? Um, if you want to come on up? This is Corey Brown, uh, a student at Trine. Hi, my name is Corey Brown. Thanks for coming. Down. Thank Tom Cochran for inviting me to speak here today. I'm here to talk a little bit about the history of the Second Amendment, my views on gun control, and the future of the United States. The first question to obtain or possess a firearm is considered good. The Second Amendment says the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Before the Revolutionary War, the boys in Philadelphia decided all the colonies needed to unite to be able to withstand the force of Great Britain. The Constitution was in the process of being agreed upon before writing the Fathers. This early Constitution, however, did not include the Bill of Rights we all know today. The Founding Fathers agreed to a minimal federal government. John Locke said, the foundation of America is life, liberty, and property during the development of the new colonies. The Founding Fathers drafted the Constitution based on these principles. When the Founding Fathers began to the colonies, Zotus Jr. led a rebellion against the Federalists, citing too much control in the federal government and limited rights to the colonists. James proposed a compromise to the Founders. Otis would promote uniting the colonies if the Founders would draft a Bill of Rights for all citizens. James would draft an initial bill that would soon be adopted into the Constitution, declaring an inevitable unity amongst the colonies. The Second Amendment was drafted to maintain a strong, well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, and if necessary, to rebel against a tyrannical government. With each administration, we continue to see new gun regulations and an increase in shootings. We as Americans must take responsibility to vote for representatives that respect our rights and lead us into a prosperous future. We continue to see our congressmen argue about topics concern them, like our rights. New laws concerning our rights should not be up to our federal government, chosen by private businesses and corporations. We should be able to express our rights publicly without concern. who we most identify with. Our nation continues to be under pressure from radically progressive societies. Liberals are radicalizing and conservatives are considering progressive ideas such as gun control. If we give them an inch, they'll take a mile. We've seen this happen before, they'll do it again. I believe there are representatives of both major parties that respect our rights and uphold the Second Amendment. Those representatives are the individuals we need to research and forecast in our bill. Consistency is key. Nothing I hate worse than the elected official that flips opinions. And so, for those who would like to challenge our Second Amendment and strip our firearms from our homes, come and take them. Thank you. He, he was a little nervous, he told me beforehand, but he did great, didn't he? Um, you guys knew who the militia was back uh, when we were, you know, getting ready to go to war with, with England? Who was the militia? We were. We were. We were the militias. It was the, it was the farmers and, the, you know, the, the uh, people in town who had weapons or whatever, whatever the case may be. 
They were the militia. They got together and they fought. Who is the militia today? You are. We are. Absolutely. Guess what? If they come for your rights, they're coming for my rights. I will stand with you. I expect you to stand with us. We will be together. We are the militia. We are the backbone of America. You guys have got to be loud and, and voice your opinion because I guarantee you, you see it every day in the media. The other side is voicing their opinion. They're, they're screaming loud and clear about what they want. And again, we have been quiet. We have been silent, but no longer. Are you with me? I just want to thank you. And uh, I want everybody to know, um, I'm not exactly sure what, you know, what's going to you know, happen in the media. They're here and I appreciate the job that they did uh, before. They, 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 they reported it you know, right down the middle of the road and, and, and I expect them to do that again today. Um, but I know that when uh, Josh did a quick count and he says there's uh, at, at least 200 people here, maybe a little bit more because people have been coming and going because of the, the cold, but we appreciate you guys taking the time to come out here and uh, showing your support uh, shake hands with each other. Get to know each other. You're Americans and your neighbors.